Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanosan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. We are almost there. We are downtown in uh, Montreal, Quebec. And here, just in front of me, the Camellia Sinensis uh, Tea House. We cannot leave Canada without visiting Camellia Sinensis, one of the pioneering gong fu tea houses in the Western world. Let's see if they are up to the expectations. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, sure, yes, <laughs> yes, that's what, that's what I aim for. Uh, I have a oolong this oolong? afternoon. Oolong? Nice. What oolong are you drinking? It's a Taiwanese oolong right. with a 18 hours roasting process. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. It's nice. <laughs> thank you. It's a sentient cultivar from the Dongding Mountain. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Kind of, uh... We actually had uh, <laughs> yes. just uh, two days ago, we were, what was that? Um, in Gaspé, Gaspé. Gaspé. Had a um, from this uh, chunk or something like I, I don't think from, from you, yeah, but it was yeah. a it was a light uh, yeah, roasting, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. this one is more the classic Dundee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was actually in Montreal in 2008, and mm -hmm. I remember there was uh, a tea house that looked somewhat different, but I wasn't able to find it right now. Oh yeah, we actually rebuilt everything because uh -huh. the tea house closed during COVID. Oh, okay. So, but we didn't give up on drinking tea though. <laughs> all right, all right. So, so we are in the right place. Yes. We can have tea. All right, it's just good. That we changed a bit the concept. Okay. Uh, we decided to put more focus on the tasting process mm -hmm. and less on the just chill and come and share a teapot. So okay. we decided to uh, kind of change all the space and create a center space here where you can have comparative tastings. So you have a little menu that changes every month, every uh -huh. beginning of the month. And at the moment, as we receive also all the new Darjeelings and Chinese green teas from the gardens, mm. from the spring, spring harvest, we also have a section that allows you to try every week we change that section and it allows you to try the new things. So the menu is gonna be on the on the table. I have one here too if you want to have a look. Okay. That's this month uh, menu here. So the idea is let's say if we compare the oolong, uh, this month we put the focus on the floral note versus the fruity note. Mm -hmm. So we have an Anxi Tiguanyin to uh, try the floral note it, that doesn't have any roasting. And we have the Bai Hao Jing Mai, uh, so the Oriental Beauty, mm -hmm. um, to have the, the more fruity note to the, the tasting. So people can try, doesn't matter if you're like beginning in the world of tea or if you're already knowing a lot, uh, there is something for everybody actually. One of the very first book I've read about tea, and it's also featured in some of the Nanoshan uh, YouTube videos. So, what uh, should we start uh, with? So, I think it would be good to start with the oolong tea. So okay, the oolong so... tea comparison so floral versus fruity. Okay, so we have the Kewanyin as a floral one and the Bai Hao Jing Mai Bio, which is a kind of oriental beauty, as a fruity one. Mm -hmm. and on this side we have 
Thank you very much. So, Karen, which one do you like the most between the two? So, I like the Baihao because I generally love Oriental beauty. Um, but I'm surprised by this Tiwani because it's not bitter at the end. It's very. Yeah, it's, it's a nice it's quite nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not that extreme. It's like somewhat subtle. It's not. Those type of kimonyin that really get into your head very, very flowery. Just more. Is it mild with a touch of milk? Maybe? Yeah. Even? Yeah. yeah? So it's, it's mild, but it, it, in a good way because sometimes the bitterness or it can get very astringent. And yeah. It doesn't feel astringent. And, and yeah. as you say, this uh, Baihao from Yunnan is uh, uh, very good and for sure. <laughs> It costs much less than Oriental Beauty from Taiwan, but I have to say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell it apart. It's really, really nice. Yeah, really nice. I'm almost curious, you know, to buy a pouch and compare it with. Uh, we have three Oriental Beauty. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have three different grades from Taiwan, and we can compare and see where it stands. And I think it's really interesting that it's from Yunnan, so you can maybe get a little bit of the soil. Maybe get a bit <laughs> of the Yunnan, Yunnan thing. <laughs> Can we try also the black teas? Mm -hmm. No hurry, no hurry. But <laughs> Which one would you like? Uh, the Chinese, or uh, the Chinese, Chinese ones. Yeah. Yeah, 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 very nice. <laughs> Which one was your favorite? The Baihao. The Baihao. Yeah. Here we have two black teas, both made with cultivars originally for white tea. On this side, the Jianghe, so a place where originally they were doing black tea. Now with the new white tea trend, they do a lot of white tea, but still this producer for Camellia sinensis produces uh, black tea as well with the Jianghe Dabai cultivar. And on this side, we have a black tea from the south, from the Guzhou province. It is uh, a Dejang, um, a Dejang Honcha, also made with uh, a white tea cultivar for a very good comparison. There is a lot of chocolate. It's very sweet. Sweet chocolate, but dark chocolate actually somehow. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Jenghe is really the, the type of taste that I know from Jenghe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it? It's an interesting comparison actually. They are both relatively uh, bold black teas. Yeah. This one, my opinion, more on the chocolate side. It's very sugary, like it reminds me of these black teas in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. They are like quite sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you know, in China, and when you go in a tea shop, you always drink tea before buying. Now, this is something you cannot do in the West because people are not really used to that concept. If they see a tasting and they are supposed to drink before they buy the tea, they would feel compelled and also almost uh, forced, let's say, to buy the tea afterward. I think that here they have done a really nice concept in this new boutique. They have this uh, tasting table in the center where you have to pay for the tasting. It's still very affordable price, but this, the fact that you have to pay for the tea, at least doesn't make you feeling you really have to buy it then at the end you probably do anyway. So it's a nice way of combining the Western culture with the Chinese tea culture and bringing a Gong Fu Cha tea table in the center of the scene without uh, the problems related with the classic Chinese tea shop. A fresh yellow tea. It has really, really the taste of yellow tea, the one you know, so it's properly fermented. And the name is Wei Shan Huan Cha. So a tea that I didn't have yet, apparently also from uh, uh, Hunan. I had before only Junshan Injen from Hunan, so a new yellow tea for me. Right. And with me joining here 
one of the owner, right? Of yes. 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 Yes, I'm one of the owners. I'm Kevin. Kevin, nice, nice to meet you. Thanks for Who joining me. My name is Gabriel. Gabriel. Yes. Um, nice to meet you too. We are somehow in the same business as well okay. because I also a tea shop. Uh, uh, it's an online tea shop now. Okay. We closed the tea house just before COVID. Okay. Nice. Yes. <laughs> because of the yeah. Yes. Just, just a lot. A lot of us did. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, and I actually came here once in 2008. Mm. and passed it by the tea house. At that time I wasn't yet in the tea business. Okay. And then I met, I think one of your colleagues in China while sourcing tea. Mm. We actually didn't meet, but I was uh, in uh, one of our supplier, suppliers for Danzong okay. and I saw a picture okay. of one of you okay. Okay. on the walls. Yeah. Oh, so funny. maybe we have in common one of the suppliers. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. And your colleague told me that everything started in 1998, so long ago. Yeah, 25 years this year. Yeah. And you're from the very beginning part yes, of the game? Yes, yes, yes. So there are four of us. Four of you? Yes. Uh, we each specialize in a different region of sourcing. Ah. And uh, we also share the running of the company. So we which direct are... the company and we do the different jobs in the company. Nice, nice. And which one are you specializing in? I'm the guy that drinks all the tea. Which one? I just drink a lot of tea. I just drink a lot of tea. <laughs> but, and how did everything start? I mean, four friends maybe? Or did you knew each other? Yeah, before? we. Uh, it started as a tea house. You were saying you had a tea house. started as a tea house. And then it developed to a tea house with a shop. And then we opened some other shops. And by, during that time, we were getting more and more specialized in sourcing. Okay. <coughs> And then um, it got to 2006, we had three shops, a school and, uh, and the tea house. And then we thought, well, we can either do more shops mm -hmm. or we can keep doing what we like doing, which is buying the tea, sourcing the tea and move into other ways of selling it. So, <coughs> sorry about that time. We uh, decided not to open any more, any more shops mm -hmm. because when you go down the shop route, it's a lot of human resources, micromanagement, and the things that come with that. And so we decided what we'd like to do was focus on bringing the tea in and then wholesale it to other people. So we mm -hmm. sell to a lot of other tea shops and, find and restaurants as well. And restaurants. Yeah, because and so uh, we were in a restaurant, yeah. saw your tea, and actually tried it already That's two it. days ago. So yeah. our, our, uh, a bulk of what, what we do now mm -hmm. is wholesale and then our shops are our precious little places where oh, right. we okay. put a lot of energy into. So and wholesale and, uh, is the core of the business actually. Yeah, it's, it's the majority of what we do now. Okay. We sell to other tea companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Under your brand only? Both. Or yeah. Both. Yeah, we do co-branding. Uh, we brand other people's stuff. Uh, uh, we do. Uh, we sell to restaurants, hotels, mm -hmm. Michelin stars, uh, little cafes. Everything. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. mainly in Quebec, I assume. Or uh, mostly in Quebec, but also uh, all over the world. We also do about almost twenty-five percent of our business is web, mm -hmm. so we send to you all over the world. Oh, I see, I see. And at the very beginning, source, if I understand correct, the very no. beginning, sources was not the focus. So, or, or, no, or not at the very good. Well, <coughs> I came in, I had another company before this, mm -hmm. so I'd already been doing sourcing for a long time before okay. that. And then uh, we had these three guys who were running in a cool little bohemian tea house, oh. which was just magic. And uh, yeah, so we and then you merge, yes, okay, exactly. nice. we merge the two nice. companies. Nice. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, we are enjoying the tea very much. Mm. Uh, it's uh, really good. It's also my my question at the beginning for myself was I know yeah. this is a company that has been there for very long. You are yes. one of the very pioneers of yes. Gong Fu, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. Uh, since we have seen so many boutiques around Quebec by traveling around, yeah. my question was. Are they still keeping the quality high or they have come well, to compromises? Uh, but I have to say, you have really good thing. Yes, that's it. That's it. Well, yeah, we bring it in ourselves and uh, 
we're actually a gang of kind of geeks. Mm -hmm. So for us, buying the best tea is, is what we obviously have to do. Okay. okay. And uh, we're fortunate that we have a market that's really into buying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we bring it in ourselves. So and we don't have a lot of really big overheads here in Montreal. Yeah. So basically we can we sell to people with them we said we always we always had this policy that we would bring the tea in the best tea we could find and sell it at the best price we could so that people could buy it as their grocery store yeah product. yeah yeah instead yeah. of bringing it in and putting it in a super fancy box and selling it as a luxury product that somebody just buys once. This is something we've noticed just before. <coughs> we just by looking at the price, we were saying, well, those are really yeah. good prices, yeah? But just to say so that. even people are even sort of suspicious of our prices. It's like, well, I don't power the price, how yeah. can that work? Yeah. Uh, but if you put our darn powers next to anybody yeah. else's, yeah. 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 they're pretty competitive. That yeah, definitely, definitely, better, definitely, so, yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll certainly take uh, a pouch of the yellow tea with me mm -hmm. because there's a uh, uh, yellow tea. I'm always in search of new yellow teas, yeah, because it's, yeah. it's just so difficult to find. And I haven't tried this one before, so yeah. I'll definitely go for it, yeah. And we do the same on all levels, so what we each year we'll be looking for the best um, Chinese green tea that we can bring in to sell at $10. Mm. And the best uh, Chinese green tea that we can bring in to sell at $14. So there's a lot of, a lot of people think that drinking the best tea is always buying the most expensive and rarest and most prestigious. Yeah. Yeah. But tea is the drink of the people. Yeah. Everybody should yeah. be drinking yeah. tea. So, and there are many levels of flavor experience that you can pay for and still be drinking the best. So yeah. our, our kind of concept and way of looking at it is that there are a lot of different bests. Mm -hmm. If we can bring in the best Fukumushi Sencha mm -hmm. uh, that people can buy on this end for $12, then we're doing our job, that's what we want to do all the time. So you kind of set, let's say, a price and you see what the best you can yeah, offer yeah. for that price. Yeah, because right? we know what our customers can spend Yeah, and we want them to continue buying our tea. We don't just want to sell them a super fancy box once, mm -hmm. we want them to be customers for the rest of their lives. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense to us to overdo the packaging. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. At the same time, we have to you know, it's the modern world, we have to think environmentally, we have to have sure. packaging that makes sense, and all that kind of thing. So this idea of trying to bring high-grade tea as a luxury product is a very short-term vision mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a nice concept for yeah. sure. It's a um, super nice philosophy, mm -hmm. and uh, you have been on the tea market for so long. Yes. Yeah. There is certainly something to learn here. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. Thank you very much. And what I just had is a fresh longing from the Lion's Peak from Schiffen. So a great experience in Camellia Sinensis boutique tea shop. How did you like it? It was very nice and the people, they're very friendly and, and knowledgeable as well on, on our tea. So it was a, a very nice experience. And also one of the few times where once I say I am into tea, they don't have to tell me all the story about the basics. They just uh, assume I know, you know, and they, they treated that as the same level somehow. <laughs> and we got also quite some tea here. And now we enjoy the last few hours in Montreal. You enjoy your tea moment. Stay tuned and I'll see you at the next one. Mm -hmm.